All right, this is a brief video uh, to give you the basic understanding of the various welding power sources available. So we're going to cover transformers, transformer rectifiers, inverters, and engine drives. The first one would be a transformer. Uh, here's a picture of a transformer. This is a Lincoln AC225. Transformers are, are basically going to transform the power coming into the back of the machine and we're going to transform it to a higher amperage lower voltage because that's what we need for welding so let's just say we plug this into a, a 110 outlet um, let's go ahead 110 outlet that's volts and maybe it's like 10 amp okay uh, we're not going to be able to weld with 10 amps but we also don't need 110 volts to actually weld uh, using about 100 volts, 80, 90 volts, something like that to get an arc started is okay. But then we actually uh, need more than 10 amps to maintain and actually melt metal and maintain an arc. So we kind of want to flip-flop these in a sense. So maybe we only need about 10 volts and 110 amps really to uh, continue to weld. So a transformer does nothing more than change that high voltage, low amp to higher amperage, lower volts. Okay, these are simple to use. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of features. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. Basically, turn the machine on, set your amperage, and you can weld. So there's going to be quite a, a bit of limitation. Uh, DC is definitely the preferred method of uh, welding, whether it be stick or TIG. TIG is a little different because we're we're talking about welding aluminum for AC, but that's uh, not practical for this kind of machine. Uh, it's not practical for heavy industrial use. Uh, the one thing I can say about these machines is that they're they're pretty much indestructible. I mean, you open it up, there's not a whole lot to them. It's just a giant transformer and a couple other wires, and there's not much to them. So they're uh, pretty simple and uh, keep you know easy to, to, to keep around for, for a long time. Uh, with that being said, as a transformer rectifier, these are also bulletproof. They are... Uh, large machines the only big difference is that they actually have a uh, rectifier in them so we take the power coming in we transform it then we can rectify it so that way we can get our dc which is the preferred method of welding for both stick mig tig doesn't really matter flux core out there uh, again the only difference is that tig welding ac is required for aluminum and magnesium uh, these can be multi-process machines uh, large and heavy so they actually you know would make a uh, constant current machine or a constant voltage machine for either MIG flux core welding or your stick TIG welding um, like I said they're large heavy indestructible for the most part we've had some of these around for for decades in our shop and uh, they're just they're great there's uh, you know it's something you just don't have to worry about just turn it on and start to burn rod uh, they can be uh, more expensive than transformers, obviously. And you can even see just by the uh, the front of these machines that there's a lot more going on there. They do give you some options, uh, which is great if, if you actually need to use those. And then these are practical for industrial use, but there are smaller and larger ones. It just depends. Like, for instance, this is a Lincoln Precision TIG 275. They make a 375 as well. So do you need the 275 or do you actually need more power than that? Inverters. Inverters can be uh, AC and DC or DC only. It really just depends on the machine. Like, for instance, this is a Fronius Trans Steel 2200. Uh, you cannot weld AC with this one. Uh, this one you can do AC, DC, and I believe this is the ESOP Rebel. I believe both of those actually do uh, AC, but it really depends. Uh, we've also got a couple smaller ESOP machines that we use, but it's only for DC welding, positive or negative. Okay, uh, the thing about them is they're very efficient. So power coming in is then transformed um, into about from 60 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And that allows us to use a smaller transformer to get the same amount of power out of it. They're smaller, lighter weight than a transformer rectifier. They can have tons of features, uh, all kinds of programs that they're loaded. I mean, they're basically uh, computers is what they are. It's uh, quite impressive what you can do with these. Um, and that's pretty much it. For and then the last one is 
engine drives. Engine drives are portable power sources that run off of fossil fuels, whether it be diesel, gasoline, or liquid petroleum. Uh, they have an engine in there, and then it goes ahead and uh, generates power for you. So they can be multi-process, AC, DC, or DC uh, power sources. So if you're just doing a lot of stick welding, then you know you can just get a DC only, or you can do some type of multi-process. This is a Bobcat, uh, which is... Uh, equivalent to like the Lincoln GXT 250 which is a you know a multi-process inexpensive machine for the most part you can get these for around five grand um, some of these bigger machines are going to be more expensive and some of these will even get up into like forty five fifty thousand dollars but they're much much larger machines turbo diesel engines and uh, just really insane amount of capabilities so uh, large and heavy, you know, you're going to toss them on the back of a truck or a trailer. And overall, they are pretty expensive compared to the other machines that are out there. Uh, that's just a, a quick uh, summary of the power sources that are available. Three of them we would call static power sources where you actually have to plug it into uh, an outlet. Where then we have one that we call a portable or not static machine. It's a portable machine, so... We can take it out there to, to the field or, um, you know, in a building that's new construction and, and generate power there.